Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If you have been here before and have subscribed to my channel, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for supporting my effort to bring book summaries to you. If you are new to my channel, please, please subscribe to my channel. Smash that like button and hit the notification icon so you get my content, red hot. Thank you so very much. Without any further ado, let's go through my summary of this epic Sanskrit poem. This is an epic poem considered to be one of the finest and has 19 sagas, also known as cantos so I have made this a three-part series. Don't miss to check out my other videos that is a continuation of the sagas. Raghuvansa is an epic poem written by the celebrated Sanskrit poet Kalidasa, who lived in India in the 4th-5th century CE. It is widely regarded as one of the most important and influential works of Sanskrit literature, and has been celebrated for its lyrical beauty, vivid imagery, and profound insights into human nature. The poem tells the story of the kings of the Raghu dynasty, which was said to have been founded by the legendary King Raghu. The poem traces the lineage of the dynasty from its beginnings up to the reign of King Dilipa, who was one of its most famous rulers. The poem is divided into 19 sagas, each sarga tells a specific part of the story of the Raghu dynasty and its rulers, and contains beautiful descriptions of nature, human emotions, and Hindu mythology. The sagas of the Raghuvansa are renowned for their poetic beauty and their ability to captivate readers with their vivid imagery and compelling storytelling. Here are the names of the 19 sagas of Raghuvansa and their narration. Pururavas is the first sarga of Raghuvansa, and it sets the scene for the epic poem by introducing the reader to the kingdom of Ayodhya, the capital of the Raghu dynasty. The sarga begins with a description of the beautiful city of Ayodhya, which is described as being surrounded by gardens, lakes, and mountains, and filled with palaces, temples, and public buildings. The story then turns to the king of Ayodhya, named Dilipa, who is praised for his virtues and his devotion to the gods. Dilipa has a son named Raghu, who will eventually become one of the most famous kings in the dynasty. However, before the story turns to Raghu, the Sarga introduces the reader to another important figure, Pururavas, a handsome and heroic young prince who is the son of the king of Pratishthana. Pururavas is described as being skilled in many arts and sciences, as well as being a great warrior and hunter. He is beloved by his people and admired by all who meet him. One day, while on a hunting expedition in the forest, Pururavas meets and falls in love with the beautiful nymph Urvashi. Urvashi is a celestial maiden, who has been sent to the earth by the god Indra as a reward for the great deeds of a human king. Pururavas is immediately struck by Urvashi's beauty and grace, and he falls deeply in love with her. Urvashi is also smitten with Pururavas, and the two of them spend many happy days together in the forest, enjoying each other's company and sharing their love. However, their happiness is short-lived, as Urvashi is eventually called back to the heavens by the gods. Pururavas is devastated by the loss of his beloved, and he searches high and low for a way to be reunited with her. Eventually, he learns that he can win Urvashi back by performing a great deed that will please the gods. Pururavas sets out on a quest to achieve this great deed, and after many trials and tribulations, he is successful. The gods are pleased with his actions, and they allow Urvashi to return to him. The Sarga ends with the happy reunion of Pururavas and Urvashi, and with the promise that their love will endure forever. Overall, the story of Pururavas is a beautiful and romantic tale that sets the tone for the rest of the Raghuvansa. It introduces the reader to the themes of love, heroism, and devotion that are woven throughout the epic poem, and it establishes the Raghu dynasty as a noble and virtuous lineage of kings. The second sarga of Raghuvansa is called, Ayodhya, and it provides an introduction to the kingdom of Ayodhya and its ruler, Dilipa. The sarga also tells the story of the birth and upbringing of Dilipa's son, Raghu. The sarga opens with a description of the kingdom of Ayodhya, which is described as a city of great beauty and prosperity. The citizens of Ayodhya are said to be virtuous and contented, and the kingdom is known for its abundance of natural resources, including fertile lands and rivers. The focus then shifts to King Dilipa, the ruler of Ayodhya. Dilipa is described as a just and wise king, beloved by his subjects. He is also a devout follower of the gods, and regularly performs religious rituals and sacrifices. One day, while Dilipa is performing a sacrifice, he is visited by the sage Vashishtha. Vashishtha tells Dilipa that he will be blessed with a son, who will go on to become a great ruler and bring glory to the Raghu dynasty. Dilipa is overjoyed by the news, and eagerly awaits the birth of his son. 
When the child is finally born, he is named Raghu, and is said to be blessed with exceptional beauty and strength. As Raghu grows up, he proves himself to be a brave and intelligent young man, admired by all who know him. He spends much of his youth studying and practicing martial arts, in preparation for his eventual role as king. The Sarga concludes with the news that Dilipa has passed away, and that Raghu is set to inherit the throne of Ayodhya. The reader is left with the sense that Raghu is destined for greatness, and that his reign will be marked by prosperity and peace for the people of Ayodhya. The third Sarga of Raghuvansa is, Kakutstha. The Sarga begins with a description of the virtuous king Aja, who ruled the kingdom of Ayodhya. Aja is described as a just and wise king, who was deeply devoted to the gods. He was also a great warrior, known for his strength and valor. Aja's wife, Indumati, is said to be the embodiment of beauty and grace. The couple is deeply in love, and their kingdom is said to be blessed with peace and prosperity. One day, Aja is out hunting in the forest when he comes across the beautiful princess Indumati, who is being held captive by a demon. Aja bravely battles the demon and is able to rescue Indumati. Indumati is grateful to Aja for saving her life, and the two quickly fall in love. They are soon married, and their union is said to be blessed by the gods. In due course, Aja and Indumati have a son, whom they name Kakutstha, also known as Ajamidha. Kakutstha is described as a virtuous and noble prince, with a natural talent for archery and warfare. He spends much of his youth in training and preparation, learning the skills that will be necessary for him to become a successful king. When Kakutstha comes of age, he sets out to explore his kingdom and meet his subjects. Along the way, he encounters a group of hermits who are being terrorized by a group of demons. Kakutstha bravely battles the demons, and is eventually able to defeat them and free the hermits. As a reward for his bravery, the hermits offer Kakutstha their most prized possession, a magical chariot that can travel through the air. Kakutstha gratefully accepts the gift, and continues on his journey. Kakutstha eventually arrives in the city of Ayodhya, where he meets and falls in love with the princess Indumati. The two are quickly married, and Kakutstha takes his place as king of Ayodhya. Under Kakutastha's rule, the kingdom of Ayodhya prospers and expands. He is said to be a just and wise king, beloved by his subjects. He also continues to exhibit his bravery and skill in battle, leading his army to many victories over neighboring kingdoms. The Sarga concludes with the news that Kakutstha has passed away, and that his son, Dashartha, will inherit the throne. The reader is left with the sense that Kakutstha was a great king, who brought prosperity and honor to his kingdom through his virtuous and heroic actions. The fourth Sarga of Raghuvansa is, Raghu. The Sarga begins with a description of King Dilipa, who was known for his piety and devotion to the gods. Dilipa was blessed with two sons, Raghu and Dandaka. Raghu, the elder of the two, was known for his exceptional strength and bravery. When Raghu came of age, he set out to explore his kingdom and meet his subjects. Along the way, he encountered a group of demons who were terrorizing a group of hermits. Raghu bravely battled the demons and was able to defeat them, freeing the hermits from their tyranny. As a reward for his bravery, the hermits presented Raghu with a magical horse named Suryakanta, who was said to be able to travel faster than the wind. Raghu gratefully accepted the gift and continued on his journey. Raghu eventually arrived in the city of Ayodhya, where he met and fell in love with the beautiful princess, Indumati. The two were married, and Raghu took his place as king of Ayodhya. Under Raghu's rule, the kingdom of Ayodhya prospered and expanded. Raghu was known for his bravery and skill in battle, leading his army to many victories over neighboring kingdoms. He was also known for his piety and devotion to the gods, and he performed many great sacrifices and acts of charity. One day, Raghu decided to perform a great sacrifice to the gods, and he sent messengers throughout his kingdom, inviting all the holy men and women to attend. Among those who came was a beautiful young woman named Sudakshina, who had been raised by her father to be the perfect wife for a great king. Raghu was immediately taken with Sudakshina's beauty and virtue, and he decided that he must have her as his wife. Sudakshina, however, was already betrothed to another prince, and she refused Raghu's advances. Determined to win Sudakshina's hand, Raghu set out on a journey to prove himself worthy of her. He traveled to the Himalayas, where he performed many great feats of strength and bravery. He defeated a fierce demon who had been terrorizing the local people, and he performed many great acts of charity and devotion to the gods.
In the end, Raghu was able to win Sudakshina's heart, and the two were married. Their union was said to be blessed by the gods, and they had many children together. The Sarga concludes with the news that Raghu has passed away, and that his son, Aja, will inherit the throne. The reader is left with the sense that Raghu was a great king, who brought prosperity and honor to his kingdom through his bravery, piety, and devotion to his people. The fifth Sarga of Raghuvansa is, Aja. The Sarga begins with a description of King Aja, Raghu's son and successor to the throne of Ayodhya. Aja was known for his great strength and wisdom, and he ruled over his kingdom with justice and fairness. One day, Aja went hunting in the forest and came across a beautiful woman named Indumati. Aja was immediately taken with her beauty and asked for her hand in marriage, but she refused him, telling him that she was already betrothed to another man. Determined to win Indumati's heart, Aja set out on a journey to prove his worthiness. He traveled to the Himalayas, where he performed many great feats of strength and bravery. He defeated powerful demons and ascended to the heavens, where he met the gods and received their blessings. With the blessings of the gods, Aja returned to Ayodhya and challenged Indumati's betrothed to a duel. Aja emerged victorious, and Indumati agreed to marry him. The Sarga goes on to describe Aja's reign over Ayodhya and the many great deeds he performed during his lifetime. Aja was succeeded by his son, King Dasharatha, who was the father of Lord Rama, the hero of the epic Ramayana. That's it folks for the first part of Raghuvansa, please don't miss to check out the part 2 video where I continue from the 6th Sarga onwards. I really hope you loved this content, please consider subscribing to my channel, smash that like button, hit that notification bell icon, it really really will help me build the channel and bring more exciting content to you. Until my next video, take care and keep well.